Hi there and welcome back. I have recently built a projector from a smartphone screen and some junk parts. This idea is nothing new of course and as always YouTube is full of projects like that. But I did some things quite different to other builders and so I thought why not making a video about it. A projector has three basic components. A light source, a picture layer which is the display and projection optics. I will describe each of these parts from my projector. The light. A projection light cannot just be a lamp behind the display, because the light must reach the optics from every point of that display. Typical projectors have a single point light source with a condenser lens that directs the light towards the display. This alone is not enough because light that hits the edges of the display cannot reach the optics. Another condenser is needed to achieve roughly parallel light beams through the display. There is a video of Great Scott about his projector experiment that shows these two lenses, although he got the wrong type of Fresnel lens. Judged by the quality of the other stuff that he makes, it is hard to believe that he didn't know better. Maybe he did it on purpose, so that people can write funny comments under his video. I didn't have the right lamp or lenses for my build and went another route for that reason. I made a strong surface lamp, which is as large as the display itself. In my favorite cheapo shop I got 5 of these battery powered lamps that have two 1 watt LED strips inside. They are that cheap and funny enough as cheap as ordering the same light strips online. The lamps are terribly designed and force almost 1.5 watts through each strip with no cooling. I guess I should send one of these to the channel of biglife.com and have him dismantle it and test whether it will catch fire or something. I attached 8 light strips to a large heatsink using plastic rivets that are made by heating up and pulling apart some q-tips. A diffuser salvaged from a broken LCD screen evens the light a bit. I also found this kind of light guide sheet in another broken LCD which can center light beams that come in at an angle. In the right distance to the LED strips the light guide makes the gaps between my lamps disappear. I run all LED strips in serial on a 24 volt power supply with a small dropper resistor. This is not optimal because the resistors are a poor current control and usually this setup would need an electronic regulator. But it works well enough without one because the 450 milliamps that go to the lamp let the power supply drop the voltage a little bit which in return reduces the current. Using a lamp as large as the display is basically the tuned up version of all these stupid hacks where a smartphone is simply put in a box behind a lens or even more ridiculous things to make a projector. This idea is even sold as a commercial product, sadly. This concept never actually works because phone backlights rarely pump out more than 500 milliwatts and are usually not bright enough. I made a simple test pattern for checking the picture quality of my projection. The projection looks pretty sharp in the center, but picture detail level goes down towards the edges because bright areas and colors basically bleed out towards the edge. The edge bleeding is a consequence of my light choice. Unlike a projection lamp that produces parallel light, my lamp emits light in a wide angle, so that each pixel gets light from different angles. I examined my lamp and found different things that I can improve. I checked the light guide sheet carefully again and found something interesting that I didn't notice before. Light that comes in at an angle is directed straight, which is good. But light that comes in straight is actually blocked away and diverted heavily to the side, so a lot of light from my lamp actually doesn't arrive at the display. This gave me an idea. By cutting the sheet into stripes I can divert angled light straight while straight light goes through the gaps. This is basically doubling the intensity of the parallel light. A box around the lamp reflects slightly angled light back into the center. The modified lamp shines more even than the old setup and is also much brighter. 
The optics. A convex lens is needed as objective. I had this magnifier lens here which works but gives a bad warped picture. In a thrift store I got this old 200mm objective for 5 euros. It was slightly broken and so I didn't feel bad while dismantling it. The front assembly contains two convex lenses and makes for a great looking projection objective. I also had this large lens here that I salvaged from a broken overhead projector. It is not strong enough as objective lens itself, but it works well in front of the display, so that more light from the display can reach the objective. I placed everything onto a particle board, which at the end will sit in an IKEA Tiena box. The objective arrangement sits in the front, and the plate with the middle lens and the display sits about 15 cm behind that. When my setup was complete, I did some tests using this high quality mock up display. My final projector will not be that bright, of course, and sadly. My phone screen cannot be larger than my lamp, and so I had to find one with a diagonal of 3.5 inches or 8.8 cm. I looked into small first generation Android phones but they usually only had a screen resolution of 320 by 240 which is quite low for projection, but I found something else. This is a Nokia N97 Mini. It runs Symbian S60, one of the first phone operating systems ever with a quite large software base and market leader for years before iOS and then Android took over. The phone has 8GB of storage and also a micro SD slot and micro USB for easy data access. The screen has a resolution of 640 by 360 pixels. Not great, but okay. The processor is a little bit slow, but the phone was the top of the line in 2009 when it came out. A software called Smart Video, which is now freeware, does a quite decent job playing video on this phone. I actually considered using this phone my trusty old Nokia N900. It has more processing power, 32GB of storage and it runs a great Linux operating system that has VLC media player and other players available. The screen would be better as well. But these phones are rare gems nowadays, with Nokia having sold just a few millions worldwide. This one is in great shape too, so destroying it would really have broken my heart. On the other hand, I got the N97 for 10 euro on eBay. The phone has some issues as phone, but it works fine as media player, so my heart allows sacrificing it. In a first disassembly session, I took apart the phone, guided by the original Nokia disassembly guide. Then, in a tedious process that required bending the frame, heating up the display and carefully pushing glue out of the way, I managed to dismantle the display module. All I need is the panel. In a much more tedious process, I managed to get out the flat ribbon cable, which was glued onto the metal housing. It has numerous fragile SMD components and was a pain to get out. To figure out how to arrange the parts without bending around cables, I made this paper mock-up of all parts with connections at the right places. I moved it around until I found a position where the screen is where it belongs. In my setup, the panel is upside down and the light passes from the front to the back. Otherwise, the picture on screen would be mirrored and flipped. I figured that I can place the touch screen on top of my box. I don't need the keyboard to control the phone. Everything together. The switches get cables attached. The screen slides into this window here like a door and is carefully held in place. The fragile cable is held on the left side by some cardboard clamps and the phone sits on the side at an angle so that the fragile cable is bent as little as possible. The right side of the cable plugs into the LCD and the left side into the touchscreen which sits on top of the projector. For powering the phone I used the guts of a car power adapter that can run on 24 volts. My projector also has built-in speakers. 
I didn't want to put effort into speakers first actually, but then I found this old amplifier board that runs on 5 volts, and also these tiny, really crappy laptop speakers. They sound awful because of their small stiff membranes, but they qualify for an unusual hack. I glue them to the lid of my box, not with the frame but with the membranes. When they are driven now, the hold it acts as a resonator and gives me a half decent sound. So, how does the picture look at the end? Well, actually, decent. I mean, for something that is built from an IKEA box and junk and from a 10 year old smartphone. The picture quality is good enough to watch cartoons and the brightness allows for a picture size of about 1.5 meters when the room is dark enough. And it was fun building that thing. So long for now, see you next time.